bring your breath into your practice here. And as you do that, start to feel your feet really connecting to the earth. So this is our base of support here. So important, okay? We want the feet, we want to feel the big toe mound, and then take your attention to the outer heel, now the inner heel, and then the pinky toe mound, and all of those things connecting to the earth, and then all 10 toes. Okay, and start to figure out where everything is tonight. Hips over um, ankles, shoulders over hips, ears over shoulders, and just roll your palms forward and breathe. yourself settle into your practice just spending this time for you hey if I missed you say if I'm just saying hi to you when you first came in hello now and if you're comfortable closing your eyes go ahead and do that or just defocus them and send your attention back to your feet and now start to draw your attention up through your legs, into your core, and feel your spine get long as your shoulders stay away from your ears. And then the crown of your head is just floating up toward the sky. So you're taller than you've been all day here, deepening the breath. And we're going to add some arms to this so with your palms turned out inhale float the arms up remember keep be kind to your shoulders here and then turn your palms face down and just press through the center of your body and if there's something that needs to release so you can just be in your practice release it now and just do that two more times breathe in lots of energy and oh, fresh breath and then release anything that just needs to be out of your way right now. And one more time, are your feet still connected to the earth? Can you still feel all four corners and all 10 toes? And exhale, down through center. Okay, so we're going to start really uh, moving the spine here. So go ahead and take your feet wider than hip width distance, and you can leave your toes face forward, but your knees and hips are going to be soft here as we move into just some forward and back motion of the spine, arms forward and elbows back, arms forward and elbows back, okay? And do what your shoulders are ready for right now. We're going to be doing more with them so we just want to get them warmed up and the motions of the spine and then the next time you're forward just hold here and roll your hands up your legs and come back to your equal standing here with your feet hip width distance okay and now the legs are going to stay firm and the feet are going to stay firmly planted on the earth as you take your arms up, take your right wrist in your left hand and tilt to the left. So this is important to not let that right foot float up because we want to keep the lengthening in the right side body. Come up, take your left wrist in your right hand and tilt to the right. And just tick-tock yourself side to side here. And you're following your breath. So everybody may not be going at the same exact pace, but we are definitely taking time to feel the motion and to make sure that the feet stay planted. And the next time you come over to the left, just stay here, release both arms kind of parallel to the earth and press away through the left fingertips as you start to take your right shoulder behind you and shine your heart up. 
and then come back up to center left wrist in the right hand we tilt over make sure that left foot is still grounded release and press away with the right fingertips rolling the left shoulder back and come center and bring the arms up and release and shake it out okay so we're going to now start to move into our twisting take your legs wider than hip width distance this time the toes are facing out and you're going to reach to the right with your left hand, let the knees bend and draw up. Reach to the left with your right hand and come up. So we're reaching a little down to start with. Reach and reach. Now start to work it up. So maybe reach only to the knee this time. And then start to reach side to side, maybe arms more at shoulder height. And then we're going to start to take it up toward the ceiling a little more each time. So we get a twist and a side stretch bonus there. And then working our way back down side to side, arms at shoulder height, hands reaching, starting to go lower toward the knees and maybe toward the floor. And then just come to center, put your hands to your hips and stand up nice and tall, straighten your legs. Leave your legs um, out like this inhale and exhale so the next thing we're going to do is is called gathering goddess energy okay so we're going to start with the arms overhead and the legs straight now turn your palms out and as you bring your arms down by your side let your knees bend out over the toes they're going out to the side here staying with the knees bent take your arms forward and then gather that energy in towards you. Now the arms go up and the legs straighten. Arms come out to the side, legs bend. Arms come forward, the legs are still in place. Gather in. So it's up and out. Forward and in. We'll do that two more times. It's up and out. Forward and in last time up and out forward and really feel all that energy gather in towards you straighten your legs bring your hands down by your side and shake your legs out okay let's come back to mountain pose and see how everything's feeling now inhale and exhale So we're going to come to the back of the mat, find mountain pose here, and just do a few fun things from back here. Float the arms up, inhale, exhale, swan dive as you fold over your hip creases and keep the legs straight. So if your hands touch your thighs, your shins, or anywhere down, lower, anywhere that they go is where they go. Bring your hands to your thighs, hips back, and shine your heart forward. And then sink your hips, bring your hands down, and walk forward coming into a plank, which could be knees up or knees down. Okay, your plank right now. Inhale and exhale. Come into downward facing dog. So now in dog, we're feeling four points of contact, perfectly balanced between four points of contact, right? Now we're going to take the right leg up and rebalance. Now it's three points. Bring the right leg down and take the left leg up, rebalancing three points of contact here. Bring the left foot down and walk the hands back toward the feet. And then when you get here, float the arms out and up. Palms touch and hands come heart center. All right, 
Remember, planks could be knees up or knees down. Down dog could always be a table, right? We're moving on. So feel free to stay at whatever makes you happy. The feet are hip width distance here. Float the arms up, inhale. Find your swan dive. Find your half lift with your hands to your thighs. Sinking the hips down, hands touch, come into your plank. Could be knees up, could be knees down, wherever you feel strongest now. Inhale and exhale. We're coming into a four point downward facing dog, two hands, two feet. All that balance going on. And the right leg comes back up. Now we're balanced between three points and we're going to walk the hands back toward the feet. Keeping that leg lifted until your body is telling you to bring it down. When you get your hands back, bring the right foot down, float the arms out and up, and take it back down. Forward fold, swan dive down, take it to a plank. Knees up or down in your plank. Okay, good. Nice and steady in your plank. Four point down dog, take it back and up. Remember, you could be doing this in table. Take it to three points, left leg up. And if the walking your hands back to your feet with your legs still up is working for you, walk your hands back to your feet and bring the left leg down. Otherwise, bring the left leg down first. Okay, and this time we're gonna take a half lift, forward fold, and float the arms out and up palms touch, and hands come heart center. All right, is everybody okay so far? Okay, we're gonna do one more thing. Remember, a lot of options here. Float the arms up, inhale, exhale, swan dive. Let's take a half lift here, sink the hips down, bring the hands to the mat, walk forward to a plank. Option here, lift the right leg and come into a three-legged dog from here, okay? Before we came into down dog and then lifted the, the right leg. Option to just do it from here, your choice. Come back into plank, put your right foot down. Same thing, either down dog, then left leg up, or left leg up and down dog. All right. Bring your left foot down, bring your knees to the mat, sit off to the side, and come into seated mountain pose. Shake it out. Okay, that was a lot of core and balance work combined, don't you think? Anybody feel that? Yeah, okay. Inhale and exhale. Okay, speaking of core, we're going to do some fun core work now, okay? So let's go ahead and, all right, in case you're not familiar with the crisscross of the legs, so I'm just gonna demonstrate real quick. Here we're gonna be laying down, okay? And we're going to be taking the legs crisscrossing up and crisscrossing down. So what are the options for this? Well, let's see, okay. All right, why don't you guys lay down and I'll talk about options as you move. If this turns out to be like a lot for you right away, just wait until I talk about options. Okay, legs are forward, the heels are six or eight inches off the mat and you start crisscrossing your way up and crisscrossing your way down. Now that's a lot and if that's more than you're asking for right now, just bring one foot down, take the other leg down and up a few times, and then switch sides. Okay, so that's another good option. Or we're crisscrossing up, and with control, crisscrossing down. Okay, yikes, this is quite a lot. Crisscross up, and final time down. We're gonna bring the legs back up, crisscrossing, and stay here, crisscrossing. Now, go ahead and bring your knees in, give yourself a hug, and release your 
spine by rocking side to side a little bit. Okay. So good spinal warm up there. And now we're going to really sense the difference to our core between having the legs straight up and how they feel as you take them down. So take your legs straight up. And if you're doing single leg, you're going to feel the same difference. Take your legs straight up. Okay. Now this might feel fairly restful for you. Okay. And now we're going to start crisscrossing the legs from here and slowly letting them come down. Oh, there it goes. Maybe the core is kicking in a little more. And as you come down a little more, maybe that core is working even harder. And then once your feet get pretty close to the earth, that is the most challenging. Start to bring it back up. Three, two, one, and bring your knees in. All right, raise one leg and wave your foot at me if you felt the difference between your leg up and your leg coming down. Right? Okay, bring it down. Two feet to the mat. Let the knees open and close. Little butterfly wings here. Inhale and exhale. All righty. So I think we'll just um, do a little bit of oblique work here. And we're going to take the legs straight up. Okay, this is pretty restful. Now we're going to take the arms straight up. Take the palms to touch here, okay? No, don't interlace the fingers, just touch your palms because that takes more energy. If you interlace your fingers, your arms can do whatever they want here. So just press your palms together, keep them together. Roll your shoulders and head up and take both hands outside to the outside of your right leg. Come center and take both hands to the outside of your left leg and release. Okay, you're welcome to put two feet on the mat if you don't love this version. Okay, if you want more, roll up both hands to the right, perfectly fine to stay right here, or take your left leg down and up. Come center and down. Take both hands to the left, stay right here, or take your right leg down. Feel that through the range of motion. Yes, what's happening in your core? and back up and take it down. Who wants to do that again? Everybody, I see. All right, let's go ahead and take the hands over to the right and we go left leg down and up, come center and take the hands to the left and right leg down and up, release, hug your knees in and just release your spine. Inhale and exhale. All right, bring both feet to the mat and let your knees just gently open and close, little butterfly wings here. Okay, and let's release the hips now. So we're going to take the right ankle across the left thigh. This is great to do in a chair too, yep. Right ankle across the left thigh. And then if you're on your back, you're going to bring your right shin in towards you. Hold on with two hands and wiggle around. Okay, if you're in the chair, you're just gonna put your hands on your shin and also see what kind of movement you can get in that right hip. Keep your right foot flexed. That's helpful and protective for your knee. All right, now pause for a moment here. Um, cross your legs tightly at the thighs. Uh, and hold on to your ankle or the side of your legs or anywhere you can find. Okay, so yeah, in the chair, you're just going to cross one leg over the other and move from side to side. Okay, if the leg doesn't cross all the way up, you can just put uh, one foot in front of the other ankle and move your hip out and back. It's the same motion. We're just getting a nice hip release here. All right, let's release, unwind, put two feet to the mat, and open and close the knees here. Yeah, now we're going to do the same thing on the other side. So take your left ankle across your right knee, draw your left shin in, and move around. 
see how this hip is feeling tonight. Okay, so we're in our figure four, but we're also getting a little bit of motion back and forth, side to side, a little circling around. And then pause for a moment, cross tightly at the thighs, and see what you can find to hold on to. Okay, it could be the outer thighs here, and wiggle around. So, like I said, if you're seated, you can cross one thigh over the other, or you can just cross at the ankles and wave your hips side to side. Lots of different ways in a yoga practice. Everybody has a home. Everybody has something that they can do, even if it's sit and breathe. Okay, now uncross your thighs, bring your feet to the mat, and let your knees just gently open and close. Whew. And when you're ready, we're going to come to hands and knees or hands on the chair. Okay, so we're coming into tabletop here. And from here, since we want to focus on balance, we're going to do opposite arm, opposite leg. So Let's go ahead and take the right leg back at hip height, flex the foot, point the toes down toward the mat, engage the core. Now your hip points are like headlights shining directly to the mat below you, and the left arm goes in line with the left ear, opposite arm, opposite leg. We already know slower is more challenging now, when you bring your knee and hand down, get them to the mat at the same time. There's your core. Okay, so taking the left leg out and up to hip height, flexing the left foot. The toes are pointing down. Balance yourself. Everybody looks great here. Right arm by the right ear. So a nice fancy term for this is contralateral balance, yes? And when you bring your hand and knee down, get them to the mat at the same time. All right, now we're going to float right into it. We're going right leg, left arm. Up you go, float into it, keeping everything nice and steady as you go. So you're going from one balance to another, staying balanced the whole trip. And then float the hand and knee down. And other side. Left leg, right arm. Balance, balance, balance. And release. All right, just take your hands forward long. Set your hips back toward your heels and move around a little bit until you feel ready to come into a child's pose. So if anything got tightened up when we were doing that contralateral balance or the core work or anything else, just move around and when you're ready, big toes together, knees wide apart, find a nice child's pose that you can relax into. And breathe. One more breath and then float yourself to downward facing dog and on your way start to get your balance so that when you arrive in down dog you're balanced between two hands and two feet okay so just pay attention to the whole journey and we're going to bend one knee and then the other, really rolling through the feet, press through the heel. Press one heel down and hold. And switch sides, press the other heel down and hold. Now press both heels down and hold. 
nice and balanced here. And see how steady and evenly you can walk your feet to your hands. Okay, so we're gonna try not to press into the right hand or the left. We're gonna stay even, walk it up, bring your hands to your thighs, set the hips back, shine the heart forward for a half lift, then fold forward from the hip creases. And from here, exhale, your lower body is made of concrete, your upper body is made of feathers. Exhale, and as you inhale, float the arms out and up. Feel your feet reconnect with the earth, and palms touch, and hands come heart center, and you are at the top of your mat once again. Inhale and exhale. All right, so now we're going to work because we really want our feet and our ankles to um, support our balances tonight. We're going to slide the right leg back, not overly far, maybe about um, two feet between the left heel and the right toes. And then bend your right knee so you start to feel it in the back of your right calf here. Bend your right knee. And then straighten, bend, and straighten, bend, and straighten. Now we're gonna bend the right knee and lift the heel and press down through the heel. Lift the heel and press down through the heel. The left leg is just supporting. One more, lift the heel, roll that foot, press down through the heel, and come back up. Okay, this time we're taking the left leg back about two feet, press through the heel. So it's a nice, feel a nice stretch in the calf and the ankle. Lift the heel, press it down. Lift the heel, press it down. Lift and press. Okay, now we're gonna lift. Lift it higher and set it down. And then step forward and shake it out. Okay. In. Alrighty. Getting ready for sun salutations now. So come to the top of your mat and we're going to add some arm work at the top. Feet are hip width distance apart. Get your breath back under you. Feel what you're feeling here. Inhale and exhale, float the arms up, inhale, exhale, swan dive from the hip creases, fold forward, fold forward. Okay, and wherever the hands decide to land, that's where they go right now. The legs are straight, the hands might be high or low, doesn't matter, in between. Hands to the thighs here, hips back, shine your heart forward. And then sink your hips down as you bring your hands to the mat. Step back into a lunge with your right leg. And just move around in that hip. Inhale and exhale. Okay, you're gonna find your way to a plank. So remember, a strong knee down plank beats a wobbly knee up plank any day of the week. Okay, plank with your hands on a chair. Just extend as far as you can. Your core is engaged here, everybody, and we bend at the elbows, take it all the way down, chaturanga. All right, take your feet as wide as the mat now, and put your hands on your spine. So your palms are facing up, but your hands are on your spine, okay? Gaze towards your mat, roll your shoulders towards your ears, and start to lift your heart, lift your heart. See where you go with this, probably not too far. And release. Now switch your hands so the other hand is on top. Gaze towards your mat, shoulders toward the ears, down your spine, lift your heart, lift your heart. And release. Okay, so that's a variation on locust with the hands behind. Go ahead and put your hands under your shoulders. Tuck your toes. Find, okay, so you can start to find your way to down dog any way you want, table to dog. If you want to do a lift up, your hands are under your shoulders, your gaze is toward the mat. Knees up or down, you press halfway up. 
Press the rest of the way up and send your hips back. Find a four point balance in your downward facing dog. So as we have been doing, we're going to go from a four point to a three point balance. And remember, we did this with the knees down earlier. You can always do it with your knees down again. Take your right leg up to hip height with the right foot facing down and just find your three point balance here. Inhale and exhale. Now let's tap the right toes down and up. Tap it down and up, maintaining that balance the whole time. Tap down and up. Next time the leg stays up, take whatever large step is available to you now. It could be very small large or very large large and walk the rest of the way to your hands. And when you get here, take a half lift, forward fold. The lower half of the body is made of cement, upper half feathers, float the arms out and up, palms touch. Yes, and hands come heart center. Excellent, okay. Any questions or things before we move on to the next side that we need to deal with? Okay, come to the top of your mat. I can't remember if we added, it doesn't feel like we added arms to the top of that last one, so we're just gonna go without it this time. Inhale, float the arms up. Exhale, swan dive over straight legs. Take a half lift, sink the hips down, hands down, left leg back, winding up in that nice, beautiful lunge and just letting the hips go. Okay, and then find your plank. Knees up or down, nice, strong plank. So what are alternatives for plank? Hands on the chair, hands on the wall, right? Inhale and exhale. And chaturanga. Elbows, elbows, elbows. Okay. Once again, we're going to come into the locust. And this time, go ahead and, if it works for you, clasp your hands behind your back. Okay? Otherwise, just place your hands on your back the way we did before. Your legs are as wide as the mat. Shoulders toward the ears down the spine. Lift up. You could even do the standing, right? Lift up. We're lifting the heart and the head is just coming along for the ride. And release. If your hands are stacked, put your other hand on top. If you've got your fingers clasped, change your clasp by one and lift up. Yeah, nice little cobra. I mean, uh, locust. Yeah, that one. And release. Woo, shake it out. Okay. And now put your hands under your shoulders and you're going to find your way to down dog, either table to dog or a lift up like we did before, halfway the rest of the way, winding up in a four point balance of downward facing dog here. And carefully raising the left leg to hip height. Flex that foot and down and up. Take it down slowly and up. Maintaining balance and control the whole time. Next time the left leg stays up, hold it there and take whatever step is available to you right now and then find your way to the top of your mat. Good, and when you get there, you half lift forward fold and float the arms out and up as palms touch and hands come heart center and we come back to mountain pose finding energy breath and balance all working together here all right we're moving on to tree and moving is the operative word here so we're going to be starting to balance Feel free to have something near you or be near something where you can just steady yourself if you start to feel a little wobbly. And if you're not near anything and you start to feel wobbly, well, what's the easiest thing to do is plant 
those feet on the earth, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and find the feet hip width distance apart. We've been working on a firm foundation, right? So we want to make sure that the feet are planted on the earth, the ankles are nice and strong here, and the legs are drawing in, shoulders back and down, palms forward, yeah. So that's our base of support. Find a spot that isn't moving to keep your gaze steady, and then have your breath be super calm as you take your hands to your hips, now just lift your right heel and start to feel what that feels like. Start to turn the knee out only as far as it's going to go without dragging your right hip back. And then if it feels good to you, start to bring your right foot to your left leg. If you want to keep your toes kickstanded for now, that works too. Okay, so just work on that basic. And release. Okay, let's check out the left here. Okay, firm foundation, calm mind, steady gaze, left heel lifts. Left knee is only coming out as far as the left hip stays forward. And then the left foot starts to either connect to the leg or the toes stay gently, gently planted on the um, mat. and release. Okay, so that's your balance on each side and it's going to, each time you use it, it'll probably get a little better. Let's go back into tree on the right, heel, knee, foot, and if you're feeling it, hands. And release. Okay, left side, heel, knee, foot, and possibly hands. Mm -hmm. Steady gaze and release. Okay, so another thing that often happens in balance is if there's anything happening in our ears, that's also going to throw off the balance. Plus, we have the full moon headed for us, right? So. It could be a little bit of a challenge tonight, but that's life, right? We have to be able to come in and out of balance. So come into your tree, you know where it is now. Come into where you're going. Maybe it feels a little more steady right now. And I said we're gonna move, so let's take the arms out and back. Woo. And out again. And back and see if we can get one more time. Out and back and release. Whew. All righty. Let's take it left side tree. Heel, knee, foot, hands to heart. Remember, you can stop anywhere along the way. And on this side, see how it works for you. Out and back, out, and back, and one more time, out, and back, and release, and shake it out. All right, I'm going to give you a minute to play with your balance. I'll tell you when 30 seconds is up. If you want to do both sides, you can do half and half. If you want to do one side the whole time, do that and go. If you had one side that was really challenging you, don't neglect it now. Focus on that side. And if you want to switch sides, switch. And you can come in and out of this as many times as you want. We're just playing with the balance right now. 
it's tempting to want to just be always on our better side, but we've got to get that more challenging side in tune with the program here. And you've got five more seconds to just finish up whatever it is you're working on and return back to a mountain pose. Everything nice and balanced here. Feet are super grounded as you inhale and exhale. All right, so one of the top balance poses that we do, tree, here's another one, doesn't always feel like so much of a balance, warrior two. So take your legs wide and turn your toes to the right, right toes to the right, left toes in at an angle. Bend your right knee and make sure that that right knee is tracking through the center of the right foot, okay? It's not sickled in at all and the knee is over the ankle. Press through the outer edge of your left foot. So here's where the balance comes in. We're super grounded and then we float the arms out and up because we're super light. Turn your gaze toward your right fingertips. Inhale and exhale here. And just holding this helps build balance and strength. And now we're going to challenge our balance with our gaze. So go ahead and turn your gaze toward your left fingertips. Follow your left hand as it comes around all the way to the right to touch your right hand. And then continue following those left fingertips as they come up your right arm through the center of your body and back out to the left. And again, left arm, following it with the gaze. Meets the right hand and then comes up the arm through center, opening to the left, gaze is to the left. And one more time, this direction. Landing back in warrior two and reestablishing that sense of balance. Can you find the four corners of your feet? Can you find the balance from the center of your body out between your right and left arm. And then turn all 10 toes forward and bring your hands to your heart. Okay, we're going to be coming into a wide-legged downward facing dog here. So just come forward from the hip creases. And if you want to stay here, stay here. If you want to bring your hands all the way down to the mat, then bend your knees as much as you need to, bring your hands to the mat, and keeping your heels grounded, walk your hands forward into a wide-legged downward facing dog. So if your hands are on a chair, you're gonna walk backward into wide-legged down dog. Same kind of dog, just the legs are wide here. And then walk your hands back in Bending the knees as appropriate for you right now. Bring your hands to your hips. Straighten your legs and your spine. You're halfway up. Take a breath and come all the way up. Okay, we'll take a moment to give the legs a little break here. Shake things out. We're going to do the same thing on the left side. Everybody good to go here? Everybody okay? Okay. So let's take it wide and turn the left toes to the left, right toes in at an angle, bend your left knee over the ankle, track through the center of the left foot, okay? The right outer, outer edge of the right foot is grounded here, and make sure that the shoulders are coming back over the hips, because a lot of times when we look to set up the left leg, the shoulders do this, we want them back over the hips, and then float your arms out to the side. So our first part of this balance is down and up. And we're gazing calmly past the left fingertips.
And now turning the gaze, just even turning the gaze is um, a challenge to the balance here. Find the right fingers and follow the right hand as it starts to come forward. Right hand meets left. Keep following the right hand as it comes up the left arm, across the body, and back out to the right where the gaze is still to the right fingertips. Follow the hand back around. And up the left arm, across the body, and open. And one more time, follow that right hand to the left, up the arm, across the body, open, and now turn your gaze back to the left and just land in your warrior two traditional with the gaze past the left fingertips here. Come back to that balance. Can you feel the corners of your feet? Okay, how are your shoulders doing? Are your hips nice and even? And then bring your hands to your hips. Turn all 10 toes forward. If you want to come into that wide-legged downward dog, go ahead and do that again. If you want to do something else, just do whatever feels good to you in a forward fold. It could be moving around. It could be stationary. And then go ahead and walk your hands back toward your feet. Bring your hands to your hips. Come halfway up. Come the rest of the way up. And take a little journey. Feet together. However you get them there. Shake out your legs. All right. So we're just going to move around now and just, uh, just feel everything. See how things are going. Any free movement that you're looking for here that your body is requesting, just let it happen. Take your time. And then look around and see if there's anything you want to take into final relaxation and grab hold of that, have it near you. When you're ready, come to the top of your mat in mountain pose, okay? Find your feet balancing again. Feet are nice and even. Where's everything else? Where are your hips in relation to your ankles? Shoulders over hips. Ears over shoulders. Hands out by your side, right? Palms facing forward. And whether you want to close your eyes or not is up to you. Just breathe. And then float the arms up, inhale, exhale, take a swan dive and see where it takes you now. Things are warmer than they were at the beginning of your practice, so see where your forward fold goes, not judging or forcing, just observing. Bring your hands to your thighs, hips back and shine your heart forward. And then sink the hips down, bring your hands down and find your way. If you have a vinyasa left in you and you want to do that, plank chaturanga, etc. Otherwise, come back to down dog. And if you've had enough of down dog, just come into table. If you're doing your vinyasa, just enjoy it. If you're in down dog or table, let your hips move side to side, maybe even the knees. And then bring your knees down and come to seated mountain pose, okay? If you're still busy, then just go ahead and finish what you're doing and meet us on the earth when you are done. There's never a need to rush through any part of what you personally have chosen to do. Sit up nice and tall and breathe. The spine is long. Inhale and exhale. All right, and let's just shake things out. All right, so we're going to work on 
lengthening the spine, but we're also going to work on connection here. So bend your knees and rest your belly on your thighs here. So there's connection between the belly and the thighs. Hold on to your hamstrings and keeping your belly connected to your thighs, start to move your feet forward. You're only going as far as you can, keeping your belly connected to your thighs. So you might wind up up here with the knees deeply bent. They might be semi-bent. You might be a person who straightens their legs here and the belly is still connected to the thighs. Okay, everybody has their place to be. Hands are on the mat, belly connected to the thighs, and then start to bring your hands back and your legs up. Moving slowly, staying as connected as you can. And one more time, we're gonna to start to, we're gonna connect belly to thighs, start to draw the legs forward, and just stop whenever it's not possible for the thighs and the belly to be touching. Just a different approach to a forward fold. And then sit up, bring your legs back, Ooh, and release. Let your knees open and close. And let's come on down to the mat here. All the way down. Okay, we're going to extend the arms and the legs long and just stay here. Now, extend your right leg and your right arm, getting as much length as you can in the right. And release, extend your left leg and your left arm getting as much length as you can, yet we're just laying down, reaching back with the left arm and forward with the left leg, and release. And let's try two arms and two legs, long, 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 and release. We're gonna go back to the left side, left arm, left leg, and release. Back to the right side, Extend the left, the right arm and the right leg and release. Now bring your hands down by your side and slowly start to bring your feet in with your knees bent. Okay, so that was a very long extension for the spine. It might have also caused a little of um, curvature in the spine there, a little extension. So we're just gonna keep the feet flat and let the spine settle down. Now draw your right knee gently in. Keep your left foot right where it is. And switch sides, draw the left knee gently in. And come back to the right. Left foot's down on the mat. And come back to the left. Right foot's on the mat. Okay, and release. So go ahead and take your right leg up and we're going to point and flex the foot and circle the ankle one direction and the other. Bring the right foot down, take the left leg up, point and flex. Circle one direction and the other and bring the left foot down. Let the knees open and close. And now let the hands open and close. Really widen and draw in with those fingers. Wiggle the fingers, rotate the wrists. One direction and the other. And keeping everything still, just moving the neck. Take your head from side to side. to center and now just start to position your body do any final movements that are the body is asking for or any realignments that the body is asking for do whatever is going to feel good to you as you start to find your way 
to a nice comfortable final relaxation position knowing that final relaxation is the most important thing we do in our whole practice. So once you're happy and in a position that you can just be without having to do, inhale through your nose and exhale slowly through the mouth, release. And then just find your final relaxation. Just a moment of quiet for yourself. Begin to bring your awareness back to your space. Invite a deeper breath. And gently bring movement back to your body. Allow your fingers and toes to wiggle. And on your next inhale, extend the arms and legs long. And as you exhale, Draw in, give yourself a hug, and find your way over to a side. Helping yourself back up to a nice easy seat. you turn your gaze to your own good heart and your bright spirit. Thank and honor yourself for your practice, and we thank and honor each other for sharing this time. Namaste.